Hello again fellow quilters and welcome to Patchwork Quilts with Diane. My name's Diane and today I'd like to share with you my first finish, very exciting, for 2024. It is a blue and white quilt. It's made in the traditional design of birds in the air. It's a fantastic scrap buster. I've used up lots of three inch squares. So I've made it with three inch squares and three inch half square triangles. So if that's something you might be interested in, please continue watching. So if you'd like all the following details, the design, the block layouts, the block requirements, Everything is on my community page. It's all free. So you just need to go onto my home page, find where the link is for the community tab. It's on the top. Click onto that and then you'll see there's two posts and they have all of the details. Well, today is the day I'm going to assemble this birds in the air quilt and I have my design and I have my construction block and I have all of the little individual blocks and now I'm just going to put them into larger blocks here so they look like they're on point. In my last video I had a little chat about productivity and how I made my quilts quite quickly and it's at this stage now in the construction stage where I'm looking for speed. Of course not everybody wants to make a quilt in a hurry you can just take your sweet time about it and it takes as long as it takes but I just like to make quilts so as I'm nearing the completion of one quilt I'm already designing in my head usually in the quilting stage my next quilt and so I like to design a quilt make a quilt finish a quilt move on to the next one but if you're not in a hurry productivity and speed it doesn't really matter does it enjoyment that's what matters so you can see that this quilt design is a 4x4 four four, and I have here four different blocks. There's a different amount of each but what's the most important part about it is if you look closely here at the different blocks that I've used from this selection here you can see the middle column of all of the blocks are identical and the outside right column is also identical. So it's only the first column that alters slightly. And so what I shall do for speed is I will construct 16 columns of the middle and the right and then I'll join them together. And then it's just a matter of making the first column for each block slightly differently. And the way I'm going to construct those two columns, the middle and the outside, is to put a block C, E, D for the middle, B, E, B for the outside. And they look like that. So I'm just going to pile 16 of each block on top of each other and then I'll sew them all together and then we'll have a look at the first column. And what I'm going to be looking for when I sew these together is try to avoid the same design touching. So you can just see here, these two, when I sew those, those will be the same and the same here, they'll be the same. So I'll have a little switch around with those. So we haven't got like touching like anywhere now. So I'm happy with that first layer. And I'll sew those together. And that's the first block sewn. So only another 15 to go. Okay, I'll sew those and then I'll get back to you. Well, I've completed 16 of the middle and the outside columns. And so now I'm going to work on each of these first columns that are slightly different. So the first block, number one, is a combination of A, F, A. So A, F, A. A and I need four of these pieces for block one. So it's A, F, A. I'll join those together. So that's block one complete and I've just turned it so that you can sort of see the birds flying in formation. So moving on to block two and we need three of those and so we'll take three of those that are completed with the middle and the outside column and we'll put A, F and B in front of those. So we need A, F and B. So I'll sew these blocks together and join them onto those. And the only thing you have to look out for is to make sure that all of these white half square triangles are all pointing in the same direction. You don't want part of the flock breaking off. 
doing their own thing. And those are block two and you can just see there's that little white half square triangle in the bottom that sets that apart. Okay, let's have a look at block three. And so there are six of block three and you can see there's a B, F, B column at the front and they fit here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I'll do those. And so on block three in the centre, we have the two white half square triangles pointing out and then we have the white half square triangle at the bottom pointing to the bottom and a white half square triangle at the top pointing out to the left. So I'll put six sets of those together and then join them onto there. We're almost done. So those are all of block three complete, six of those and we are on to block four now and there's three left. So block three has the white triangle pointing to the rest of the flock and then there's a half square triangle pointing upwards to the left. So I'll sew those together and those are all the blocks complete. And so now it's just a matter of construction. Okay, that's the next step. Well, if you saw my first video of 2024, that was the one where I moved the room around, I had a good old tidy up and I had the dilemma of do I have a design wall put in or do I leave it as it is? Well, in this instance, a design wall wouldn't have worked because the quilt blocks were too big. So I needed the floor space. So again, still undecided. <laughs> But that didn't really work in its favour, did it? OK, let's get back to looking at the blocks on the floor. Perfectly adequate. And so I've decided to lay these blocks out in the way that I've designed the quilt. So this is block one and that forms the left hand side. So I've put those in place and at the moment there are no designs that are the same touching. So let's have a look at block two. Now block two are three blocks that go across the top. So I've laid out the top row. Okay, I'm going to do the middle piece now and there's six of those. Well, it's not looking too bad. There are a couple touching, but I don't think they jump out too much. But what does jump out, if I just take you forward, if you see that second block along there, that half square triangle has been sewn in incorrectly. That should be on the end of the block. So I'll need to unpick that and put that in the right place. <laughs> Better to have noticed it now than not at all. Can you imagine if I'd have sewn all that together? Oh. Anyway, I didn't. <laughs> I did notice it. OK, then let's just put the last row in now. Well, now I've altered that half square triangle in the top corner. So they're all ready to be joined. So now I'm thinking I want to preserve the points on the end of these wings and on the beak. So if you look over on the left hand side, you can see there's a row of just three inch squares without any white half square triangles in. So that's OK. I'm not going to lose any points there. But really, if I've got enough blue, I could do with making a row of three inch squares to go across the bottom on the right hand side and across the top. I'm not sure what fabric I've got left. In an ideal world, that's what will happen. Well, as it turned out, it was an ideal day and I did have enough blocks. You need another 74 three inch blue squares to complete the border on the three sides. I think it's worth it. It is optional. I have made a note on the community page on the details if you want to. It's up to you. And now before I fill up a lot of navy blue bobbins, I'm using the thread that are in the bobbins already. So there's a little bit of grey there and there's some white there. And I'm using those by putting these pieces together. So this is a scrappy quilt. So whenever I have a project that I've got three inch half square triangles left over, I save those. And now I'm just beginning to put these together, a sort of hourglass shape. And that's something else that helps me with my productivity. I know myself, I know that if I just put all leftover fabric in a box that was crumpled, I wouldn't use it. 
I will use it if I've processed the sizes, if they're pressed and they're ready to go. So on a day like that, when I have some thread that I want to use up in my bobbins, I can run a few under and then one day a little pixie miracle will have happened and I will have a completed quilt top. It will be scrappy, it will look pretty, it's nice quality fabric and that will be another one that I can say in 2024 I made however many quilts I've made. That's yet to be seen. And it's all finished now and I'm really pleased with it. If you look closely at the top you can see that I used a white thread and that's because I didn't want to see a darker colour going across the white bird. And you can see the white on the darker colours but I don't mind that. And it's edged in a navy blue. I've got to get rid of the lint and little mitered corners. And I put a row of stitch in there along the edge just to make it a little bit more robust. So the quilts I make aren't show quilts, they're not works of art, they are artful objects that are attractive but I make them to be used. I want them to be used and I want them to be loved. I imagine a life that they lead when they go out into the world, you know perhaps they're a den or people snuggle up with them and read a book or have a glass of wine or they go on a picnic or to the beach. But with that comes wear and tear and they need to go into a washing machine. So I sew them in such a way that they are strong and they can take a few bashes that life and love will give them because that's what I want from my quilts. And I try to make them as eco-friendly as possible. Okay, let's have a look at the whole thing now. And so from top to bottom, it's 64 inches. And from left to right, it's 62 and a half. And the difference in the sizes is due to the addition of that extra border. But I think it was worth it because you can see there's a nice balance. There's just one row of three inch squares around the outside of it all. And all the points are preserved. And I'm calling this one Birds in the Air because it is a traditional design apart from that little half square triangles there that singular bird that I've put in the flock but my husband said if they were orange it would look like angel fish swimming in the ocean well he does have a point and I'm wearing orange today so if you don't fancy making a birds in the air quilt but you do fancy making a fish in the ocean quilt well there you go all set <laughs> So that's it outside. You can see now all the colours really sparkle. And there we are, birds in the air. So we have birds on the branches and birds in the air on the quilt. And I think that makes a really lovely double bed topper. It's made from 100% cotton top, 100% cotton batting and 100% cotton backing. So that's it, that's my first quilt for 2024 and I'm very proud of it. I think it looks lovely and I've already designed <laughs> my next quilt. I did that in the quilting process of this one, like I said, and it's to do with this 2024 Chinese Year of the Dragon again. I've got to get this out of my system. I don't think it's going to be a big quilt. I'm not sure. I've got to go to the shops today. I'm hoping to get a little bit more fabric. I'm a bit short on the fabric that I want to use but I'll share that with you next week. So if you're still with me thank you very much for giving me your time and enjoy your quilting and I'll see you again next week. Take care everyone. Bye. <laughs>